Hi there, Juan from Per here. In this tutorial, I will show you how to connect your Facebook pages data to Google Data Studio to automate your social media reports. Quite simple, with no code. Let's get started. The first thing I want to show you is how to connect your data to Data Studio. And you have two options. One, by visiting our website. And second, by going directly to Google Data Studio. What is the difference? If you start from Google Data Studio, you will start with a blank report. If you start on our website, you will start with our default report template, which we hope will save you a lot of time. I will start on Google Data Studio first. Once on Google Data Studio, I will go to create and then go to create a report. Once on the Google Data Studio connectors gallery, you will type order metrics or you can type Facebook insights. I will type order. Here, you will find all our Google Data Studio connectors and I will look for Facebook Insights. I have already logged in with my Gmail or G Suite account, that's why it shows authorized. Now I will authorize my Facebook profile. I want to ask if I want to continue with my profile, so I will say yes, continue as one. Once we have connected our Facebook profile, it is time to choose one or more pages to create a report. So I will go to this drop down and I can choose one or more Facebook pages. In this case, I want to search only for one Facebook page, which is called Porter Metrics. I didn't find it, so I will type on search and I will type order. And here I have it. What will you get? Well, if you want to combine three Facebook pages and you create a metric that is called total likes, you will display all the likes combined from all the three pages. This will be super helpful for franchises or companies with multiple brands, for instance. Here I only have Porter Metrics, then I will go to Add. I will go to our website, portermetrics.com, and I will click on Try for free. Here I can choose any Google Data Studio connector, Facebook ads, Facebook pages, Instagram, LinkedIn, Shopify, and many more things. I will click on Facebook pages. Remember that we have previously connected our Facebook profile to Google Data Studio. That's why I don't need to reauthorize. Here I will follow the same process. I will choose a Facebook page and again it will be Porter. And now I will go to connect. In this view we will see all the fields, metrics and dimensions that we can visualize from Facebook Insights. We can include posts, comments, likes, reach and many more things. I will review this right now. I will go directly to create a report. And then create a report again. Ladies and gentlemen, we have automated a Facebook page report on Google Data Studio. You could actually stop the video right now, but if you want to learn more about Data Studio, you may want to stay because I want to play with these metrics, I want to understand these charts. For instance, this first chart will show me how many likes my Facebook page has and how many likes I have over time. I actually will go to View, and on View I can play with this data. So, I have this number, 8K, page total likes and I can see every day how many likes my Facebook page has like a reaction, an engagement, a comment, a share or whatever that Facebook says hey people like this Facebook page and this is super cool I can visualize many post insights for instance I can visualize the post image the post message the message or the copy I created for this post and I can even display all the comments people are making on this post. Actually, Porter made some dimensions to calculate the first 10 comments, the first three comments, the first five comments, and all the comments you can decide. And these are the dimensions. Now for metrics, I can visualize every post by post engagements, post reactions, shares, comments count, and even the actions, likes, or hate, or sad, or whatever. Instead of hate, it is anger. That's the actual word. But this is not everything. There are other dimensions for posts, like post type or post date. You can find all these metrics and all these dimensions in the guide I will share with you below in the description of this video. So here we can see our report for Facebook page posts. This is super interesting, but I want to go through other reports. So we have a new blank report. I want to show you a trick. I will go here to one of these pages and I want to have the same header on all the pages. So I will go here and I have two options. I can select this and I can copy and paste. That's one option. And the second option is right click and then I can choose a make a report level. If I make this report level, this header will be fixed in all our pages in this report. 
So let's do it. Make this elements report level. Now I will go back to the new page and we will see the same header we had already. This is super cool and this will save you a lot of time. And if you're wondering how to do these tricks and hacks on Google Data Studio, our YouTube channel and our blog has everything so you can automate your reports on Google Data Studio. Now we have this blank report and I want to understand my audience demographics. I will go to insert and I will choose a pie chart. So if the dimension contains page likes, the metric post engagement won't help. This is a common error for people using the Facebook Insights Google Data Studio Connector. If I go here to see details, you will see that these fields cannot be combined. This is a common error. Why? Because you cannot combine page metrics with post metrics. They are separate, they are independent. The right metric is page likes. So I will go here for metric and I will choose likes. Okay, we have this blank report and I want to understand my audience. Who is my audience? I would like to break down my audience by gender. So I will get started. I will go to here, insert, and insert, I want to choose a pie chart. And I will display it right here. By default, this is displaying no data because the default dimension and metrics are post engagement and post image, and we don't have any post for this time. I will change the dimensions to understand gender. There is a dimension that is called gender. And you can see that you can break down your page followers and your page likes by gender. I will choose page likes gender first. And here we have, you can see that most of our audience is female, but it is slightly different. I will go to control C and control V. I will do the same, but instead of likes, I want to visualize page followers. So the dimension will be followers. I have chosen page follower gender and there is a problem. I am combining followers so I can change this or this, but they should be the same. I will do it again with page total likes and instead of followers, I will do it with likes. So you can see that we can break down our data by followers and by likes. This is something that only our connector, as far as we know, has. Most connectors only let you break down your data by page likes. Now, I will show you something else. I want to visualize this behavior over time. So instead of a chart, I want to visualize a time series. And let's see how it works. This chart will show you over time how many female and how many men are liking your page. This is quite interesting because you can visualize variations. And again, this is something I guess only our connector currently has. There is something, you can do this with likes and with followers again. I will show you one more thing. I want to combine gender and age in the same chart. So let's do it. I will go to insert and then I will create a column chart and I will display it right here. So here I want to break down my audience by gender and also by age. So the initial dimension is gender, but I also want age. and I will search the right dimension. So here I have created a chart where I can break down my page likes by gender and age in the same view. I will do something else. This is useful already, but I want to make it more actionable or more insightful. So I will go to style and I will make this bar chart horizontal instead of vertical and I will make it stacked bars. So here I have a very visual. I can see that most of my followers are female and most of them are in the ages between 25 and 34, I can actually arrange this data to make it better. Because ages have an order, we start from 13 years old to 65. So here, so here in sorting, I can sort by page total likes, but the secondary sort, I mean the sort within every chart, can be, instead of page total likes, can be something like age. Now this is sorted, but I want to make this ascending. Now my chart is more insightful. I can see by age and by gender. I can see that I don't have any 13 to 17 years old people. I have some people who are very young. I have people who are young adults who are 25 to 34. And then some people are 34 to 44 years. So if you are watching this video, you are likely to be within this age. We are still young, hopefully. I want to create a table where we display 
post data. So I want to go to page six of six and I will add a new page. Here, I want to do something new. So I will go to insert, but before the table, I want to create again a column chart. And I will display it right here. I want to show you something. To analyze our post performance, I created a bar chart where I want to display by post type where I am getting most engagements. Here you can see if I use the dimension post type and the metric post engagement, but I could use post reactions, post saves, or whatever metric related to posts. I can see that most engagements happen on video for my Facebook page. This is helpful because this tells me, okay, maybe I should be creating more video. I created this chart just to show you an example, but I want to create the table now. So I will go to insert and I will go to the table and then I will drop it right here and we will display more post data. By default, I am visualizing post type, but I would like to display an image. So the dimension here, instead of post type, will be post image. Okay, we have created the images. You may be wondering, hey Juan, this image seems blurry and there is an odd person here, it is me. That's the first thing. Why it is blurry? Well, because sometimes Facebook doesn't give you a high quality image, it gives you a thumbnail, it gives you a smaller size image, and when you make it bigger, it will display like this. So, so the solution for blurry images is making your columns smaller. If I make it like here, now it will look better. I want to add an additional dimension, which will be post message. Post message will display the copy, the caption of our Facebook post, but I cannot see it right well here. So I will go to style and I will wrap the text. Here in wrap, I will go to wrap text and wrap text for both column title and the values. And now I can see what copy I am creating for every post. One additional dimension. The data, I could actually use post type. So if I use post type, this will display video. For instance, this is a video, but I won't do it. I will do it with comments. Our Google Data Studio connector lets you display the first 10 comments, the first three comments, five, and all the comments. I will go with all our comments. Super cool. I am seeing what people are saying on our posts. This is quite interesting. There are many more things we can do with our Facebook Insight Report. We can actually break down our post by topic. We could say, hey, if my post message contains the word marketing or contains the word Google Data Studio, we can break down by topic so I can see which topics have more interactions. Another thing that I could do is calculating myself engagement rate. I could take page impressions and I could take page engagements and I can divide them. But all these formulas and all these tricks, you will find them in our next videos on our YouTube channel. I hope you have liked this video. This is a quick introduction on Facebook Insight Reporting on Google Data Studio. In other videos, we are seeing how to automate your Facebook ad reports, Instagram, LinkedIn, and many more things.